Uh, we show Tony Storm beating Deanna Parrott's Revolution. Then Renee interviews Tony, who says it's award season. So on collision, she will be presenting the Tony Awards. That's Tony with an I, so we don't get sued, she explains. And she presents Mariah with her very first shirt. You mentioned Willow. Here's Renee intervie interviewing Stokely and Willow. Stokely wishes Chris would accept help from those who love her most. It's announced that next week at Big Business will be Riho versus Willow Nightingale one-on-one. -on -one. And then Willow cuts the best babyface promo. She's so awesome. Next week, she insists, first of all, Stokely's going to do things her way. She knows she can beat Riho. She has her sights set on Julia Hart and becoming the face of TBS. But she's got to get through Riho first. Like, she's one of the best baby faces on the entire roster. Yes, she is. She's great. She's great. Shivani interviews Darby Allen, who will be facing Jay White at Big Business next week and then flying to climb Mount Everest. Like, in that order, in about that much time. Yeah, end of yeah. this month, he's going. Yes. Crowd is chanting his name, of course. Uh, he notes there is no guarantee he is coming back alive, which is true. The The odds are he is coming back alive, but... I mean, the odds that there he... are a half dozen people that die on an average year. Yeah. And I heard from people today, and they said, you know, the thing with Everest is, you know, weather. If if the weather is good, like, you have a much better chance. If the weather turns bad, then you need to decide to potentially turn back. Yep. And one of the issues is some people don't want to turn back. Right. And you have to be willing to turn back if shit goes bad. Yep. So, you know, he's not climbing alone. Sure. He's going to be climbing with a crew. Right. So, you know, people are like, Darby don't seem like the guy that'll turn back. He's not, it's not going to be his choice. Okay. Yeah. The the people that do this and have done this, they will decide whether they turn back or not. So, you know, if I had to put money on it, I, I presume that it's going to end up all right. But yes. it's not a guarantee. No, it's, it's not a guarantee. Absolutely true. His, his odds of coming back alive are significantly lower than if you would go to see the mall or the ocean. I think the stats I saw for uh, 2023 were, they had actually a really bad year, like 12 people died, okay. as opposed to the average of six, but 500 people made it. Okay. So, you know, most, the vast majority of people either make it or they turn back. The vast majority, I'll put it this way. The vast majority of people live. There you go. They go home. But yes. you never know. You're climbing a 30,000-foot mountain. Yeah. It's big. So, best of luck to him. Uh, let's see. Thanks all, if it's, uh, thanks all the fans and AEW for letting him live his dream. If that's his last match, he went out fighting for his life. Uh, can't replace Sting. The next team that wins these belts, congratulations. And he lays the belt down on the mat. Jay White comes out to confront him. And he cut a straight babyface promo at the pay-per-view on the pre-show. And he was a total asshole heel tonight. So I have no idea what's going on with Jay White at this point. Well, what's going on with Jay White, I believe, is that he is a heel who is pretending to be a babyface. But he wasn't pretending here at all. Well, he uh, he let the mask slip. Okay. But it was bizarre because, you know, his they advertised a big match. Jay White versus Darby. And Jay White spends the whole time going... You know, we don't got to do this match. Just join up with us and party. We don't need to do this. I'm like, you are not selling me on this match next week at all. And then Darby does the promo going, you know, you won uh main event of the Tokyo Dome twice, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. You've been all over the world. You came here and what have you done? You played with a cardboard cutout. And I was like... Well, that's true. We did main event one show. But that also didn't make me... I, mean, I was yeah. like, I want to see the match because I know it's going to be great. But boy, you two did not sell me on this match. And then he whispered something to Jay. And Jay got a very serious look on his face. Jay was gotten to. He said he'd see him at big business. Yep. There's a lot of talking on the show. That's where, I, that's where I noted that for the first time. Well, we have one, two, three, four. Four promos in a row. Yep. Julia Hart promo. The short, Willow, you've forgotten who I am. On Friday Night on Rampage, I will issue an open challenge to remind everyone who the TBS champion is. House of Black are being spooky. They are setting, threatening to set Mark ablaze. Eventually, they clarify it's Mark Briscoe. And they say, let us know. Do we need to get, dig one grave or three? And they fade away. And I'm like, so what's the match? What's happening here? 
Renee interviews Mark Briscoe. I figure that out. They challenged Mark, and the reason they asked one grave or three is, are you going to face one of us, or are you going to get two partners? I see. And so the next segment was him getting two partners. He got two partners. Uh, he's willing to do it by himself, but Jay Lethal interrupts. I got your back. Briscoe says, that's fine. Don't bring Jeff Jarrett. Lethal says, hang on. What better person to have on our side in an Atlanta street fight than a low-down, dirty bastard like Jeff Jarrett? You don't got to trust him. You just got to trust me. And Briscoe was all in. Briscoe agreed. Yeah. He, he is a low-down, dirty bastard. I don't trust him, but I do trust you. That's when it occurred to me, Jeff Jarrett is going to wrestle the House of Black. That's going to be weird. Well, not only that, mm -hmm. when the House of Black did their promo, they vowed to set Mark ablaze. Yeah. Julia saying Ring of Fire. And Briscoe said he would walk through fire and flame. Okay. This is not coincidence. No, probably not. They're, they're either doing an Inferno match... Or they're just... Uh, actually, I guess I could check. Let's see if they used fire on uh, on Collision. Does that count as a spoiler? If they used fire? What was that? That's the stupid ad. Ah. Ads on my own damn site. Uh, let's see here. Yep. Uh, no, uh, no spoilers who won, but there was fire. Okay. Exactly as I expected. There you go. Kyle Fletcher versus Will Ospreay. Ospreay is... Uh, um, fucking amazing. Well, that too. But I mean, at seventy five percent, and and it's just a mind blowing megastar. And like his entrance, his presence is like before the match, he has everything you would want a true superstar to do. He's one of a kind. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Kyle Fletcher on a vastly improved haircut. That's part, that's true. So this match was awesome. They had a great, great, great wrestling match. Before we get into the match itself, okay. well, let's look at the story here. So Don Callis decided at the pay-per-view that he was going to make Will Ospreay versus Takeshita. And then as soon as it was over, he decided he was going to give us Will Ospreay versus Kyle Fletcher. Yeah. Who, of course, was Will Ospreay's former best friend, lived together the whole nine yards. And it was it was noted that Callis, you know, Will Ospreay got hurt. He hurt his back. Callis sent him out to wrestle again, but he didn't make Takeshita wrestle again. That's true. So, clearly, this uh, this is building towards the split. It has not happened yet. I'll give him another week or two. But uh, let's get going. Let's do this. He's top baby face. We need one right now. We really do. We really do. Now, as great as this match was, I did spend a large chunk of it thinking, I can't believe how much Will Ospreay is giving Kyle Fletcher here. <laughs> yeah. As you no realize one... Kyle Fletcher hadn't even been on this show since, I believe, October? <laughs> I knew it had been a long time. Somebody sent me the stat. Fact... It was like, he has not been on this show forever. And, you know, the the ratings are in for this show. And this uh, this did not do great. This, uh, let's see if I can find it here. The uh, quarter hour for this, I believe, was like in the 600,000s. All right, from uh, WrestleNomics. Uh, this match did uh, 654,000, which is way below average, and uh, 306,018 to 49, which is way below average. And even the overrun only got up to 676. It was the least watched thing on the show by far. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the reason for that is, you know, people, I mean, some do, obviously. I can tell you how many exactly. Uh, 654,000 people will tune in just to see a banger. But otherwise, it's star power. Mm -hmm. It's a meaningful match that has been built up for a while. That's what's going to get people to tune into the show. Yeah. And the fact is, Will Ospreay is fucking awesome. If you know Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher, you knew this was going to be a fucking awesome match. But at the end of the day, we have not seen Kyle Fletcher wrestle since October. Mm -hmm. He's almost never on the show. You you told the story on a pay-per-view, which even if we say the pay-per-view did fantastic, 190,000 would have been how many people watched it to see the angle. And so that was one of only two things that you announced for the show was a match with a guy we haven't seen wrestle since October 
And uh, and Riho also may not have wrestled since October, for all I know. Mm. People aren't going to tune in just to see a great match. You need more. You need big names. You need stars. You need meaningful matches. And this is just an example of that. Just to follow up, Kyle Fletcher's last win on Dynamite was in August. August. Yes. He's not won a match since August. Six months. Okay. Yeah. So, match was great. There was a point in the... In between the two commercial breaks, where Osprey is set up for the Hidden Blade, I thought, perfect, he's going to hit this move, hit his finish, and win, and instead, Fletcher ducks it, spikes it in the turnbuckle, they keep going a lo- for a long time, for a long time, and I thought, you know, this is a great match, but the purpose here should not have been to have a great match. Will Osprey should have hit this ring like a high-flying Goldberg and slaughtered this bloke and been done with it. So we have the Cheeky Nando's kick. We have Avalanche Poison Rana. We have a Hidden Blade. And Kyle Fletcher kicks out. I know. I think I should probably kick out of it too. But maybe establish your finish before everyone kicks out of every match. And Will is hitting Kawada kicks. And then my DVR ended. Yeah, same thing happened to me. I am assuming Will Ospreay won. Uh, Will Ospreay did win. And I understand Brian Danielson. This out. went seven minutes over. Okay. Uh, it was on YouTube. But uh, my DVR ended as well, as did many other people's. Yep. But it's a problem that they will not remedy for reasons I cannot comprehend. I've I've been ad nauseum about it. But at this point, I don't care. Yeah. If they don't care, I don't care. But uh, he won, and then Brian Danielson had the face-to-face. And, uh, and that was that. So it was an awesome match. Yes. It was an awesome match. Yes. And that was Dynamite. Not Dynamite. That was a good show. I, I did, I did sure. enjoy Dynamite. Yeah, yeah. It was better than NXT. Oh, yes. Right. Although NXT was better than last week's NXT. Yes. Which I think last week's NXT may have been at the bottom of the barrel. In a long time. It worse in a long time. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.